And this is a perspective view as if we were on the ground. It's actually an orbital image, but we project it as if we're on the ground. Uh, this will show you a little animated GIF that, that shows you the time sequence of, of these features. So on the left is a black and white image. This is Palakir Crater, and it's all along the uh, – and then in the northern hemisphere, we've seen quite a few of these now in Acidalia Plain. If you go to the next one, uh, this just shows Mars and its orbit around the sun. And this is to explain a little bit about why we see these at different times and different places. So if you've seen the slide, there's, a, um, there's, a, there's an orbiter shooting rays down. And that's, that's basically what, what spectroscopy is. Um, an excellent example to illustrate the theory behind spectroscopy is at about 2.14 microns. It's another beat, which means light is also being absorbed at this wavelength. And you can see arrows pointing to some faded streaks flowing out of the crater wall. Uh, this is in a sort of slightly different location in the southern hemisphere of Mars. Uh, if you, for example, if you take a glass of liquid water here on Earth, the water will remain in the liquid form until you hit zero degrees Celsius when it will start turning into ice. I will now discuss the second major implication and then discuss some of the broader significance of our findings. So perchlorate salts have a special capability pertaining to the absorption of atmospheric water through a process called deliquescence. Basically, if the humidity in the Martian atmosphere gets high enough, perchlorate salts will absorb the atmospheric water until the salt dissolves and forms a liquid solution. This is one possibility for explaining the formation of RSL. So this sort of physical process can explain the features that we observed here. The discrete darker patches observed in this image may be formed by deliquescence. Our detection of perchlorates at RSL sites are shown here in blue. So water, as I'm sure many of you have heard us say on multiple occasions, is an essential ingredient for life and may decrease the cost and increase the resilience of human activity on the Red Planet. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we now will transition to our uh, question and answer. We now have, I think, great opportunities to be in the right locations on Mars to thoroughly investigate that. Chemical fossils of possible past life on Mars, the existence of liquid water, even if it's super salty, briny water, gives the possibility uh, that if there's life on Mars, you know, that we have a way to describe how it might survive. Um, we have only one example of life, and that's us. This is it, on planet Earth. Well, I think the real challenge, uh, and if you think about the progression of altitude on Earth, you know, as you climb a mountain, say you're climbing Mount Everest, when you're in the, you know, the verdant valleys of Nepal. There is life on Mars is, in fact, to be able to bring a sample back to look at it thoroughly to understand what is there and uh, what the possibilities are. 